Halleluja, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome into our presence, welcome into our day, welcome into our way, welcome Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here, come flood this place and fill this atmosphere, receive our worship, our fourth watch worship, this is our time and our season. This is the day that you have made, O Lord God Almighty, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day and the time and the season and the moment and the second and the hour when we lay at your feet, when we say, visit us, Lord, anoint us, Lord, appoint us, Lord. Clothe us, Lord. Give us your mind, Lord. Let the Spirit of the living God be upon us and manifest through us as the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, as the Spirit of counsel and might, as the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And Father, by your Holy Spirit and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the anointing for the fruit of the Spirit to be manifest in and through us and the gifts of the Spirit to be manifested in and through us for the glory of your name and the satisfaction of this world we thank you lord god almighty that this fourth watch family hour it, this fourth watch family hour is filled with family members who are who are fluent in the language of the spirit who flows in the gifts of the spirit who walks in the anointing of the fruit of the spirit that lord many will be healed delivered set free and made whole many will be taught i thank you that apostles prophets preachers teachers evangelists shall arise and shall flourish and shall in increase from this family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we thank you God that no weapon formed against this fourth watch family shall prosper and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall tread upon serpents and scorpions we shall tread upon all the works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means distract us delay us derail us or deny us I thank you, O Lord God Almighty, that we are blessed and highly favored. We are seated with God Almighty in heavenly places through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we cannot fail. We always prevail because Jesus Christ is our Lord. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we will never shrink back pull back or return to our old our vomit as the word says but we shall always press towards the mark of the high calling of God we thank you that we shall never be discouraged but always encouraged we thank you that we will always remember that we are the head and not the tail we are above and not beneath and that we are more than conquerors through him who love us ah thank you Lord that we shall always remember that we are power to tear down principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places and every ruler of rulers of darkness lord god i thank you that we shall always remember that like david our enemies are too big to miss not too big to to defeat in the name of jesus christ we thank you lord that no armies that encircle us will cause us to fear or to shrink back but we will say there is more with us than against us and so we will attack and take lord when things have been stolen from us like lot and his family and his things were stolen Lord like Abraham we will draw for the angels in our house and we will pursue overtake and recover all like David at Ziglag go God Almighty when everything was stolen from him and from his army his fellow army brethren Lord I thank you that when they acknowledge you in all their ways you said pursue overtake and recover all I thank you for the anointing to pursue, overtake, and recover all this morning. I thank you that every fourth watch family member, oh God Almighty, wherever they are in the world, the anointing to pursue, overtake, and recover all is being poured upon them now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that the enemy has stolen from us, oh God Almighty, over the years, over the years, 10, 20, 15, 30. Ah, oh God Almighty, we thank you that this morning we reach into the realm of the Spirit from the fourth watch our time and we reach into the sea where the marine kingdom is and we take back what is ours. We reach into the second heaven and we take back what is ours. We reach into the earth and into the graves and we take back what is ours. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we take back our children, we take back our health, we take back our wealth, we take back our good success, we take back our, our mind, will, and emotions, we take back, oh God Almighty, our purity, we take back our soul and the soul domination in the name of Jesus Christ, and we give back, our oh God Almighty, soul ties, we give back oppression, we give back depression, we give back stress, we give back hypertension, diabetes, auto immune diseases. We give back every kind of cancer in the mighty name of Jesus. We bury them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we declare that we are more than conquerors, O oh God Almighty. We are more than conquerors. Oh God Almighty, we thank you this morning that it is well with our souls. It is well with our souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask you right now by your angelic host to visit every home visit every office, visit every person, oh God Almighty, in this Fort Watch family, wherever they are right at this moment. Hallelujah. As they are hearing whether now or later, I thank you Lord that as the, at the sound of my voice, your angels are right where they are. You are touching, you are covering, you are anointing, you are appointing, you are blessing, you are pouring oil upon your people in the name of Jesus. A new robe is being put upon them in the name of Jesus. A fresh might upon their heads in the name of Jesus Christ. You are covering their families, oh God. Angels are walking through and through the place where they are right now. And you are covering them under your wings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so Lord, we take every enemy of our time, every enemy of the fourth watch hour, everything that the enemy has put in place between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, we destroy it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every assignment, every contract that has been taken out against your people across the kingdom spectrum, across the nations and continents, across the, the, the social, the economic strata and every tongue, we destroy it by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that your kingdom people shall live free in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Freedom has come and we claim it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that this is the day that Fort Watch family is able to walk in your freedom. And so, Lord God Almighty, by the anointing of freedom, we pray this morning for Sister Sandra McGowan. We declare, O oh God Almighty, that Sandra shall no longer struggle with diabetes and hypertension. And we break every spirit of hypertension and diabetes of Sister Sandra this morning in the name of Jesus. We command diabetes to go from her body now. Come on, come on. Come Come on, go now. Hypertension, go now. Go now. You're a spirit and you must obey and respond to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we order you right now. Go now, 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 now. And we declare that she must, she will go for her driver's license today and she will get it and it will be well and she will celebrate the goodness of the Lord because that car that was given to that family must be driven by Sister Sandra in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for our sister, Sister Lona Isaacs. Lord God Almighty, she's lifting up her family before you. Oh, how much more unselfish can she get? How much more seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness can she get? Ah, oh, God, she has put her family before you. Oh, God Almighty, she asks for Junior to be touched by your hands, that the hernia can go in the name of Jesus. She asks for her it's Horace's heart problems ah, and hypertension to be addressed. Father, we speak to Horace's heart and we command a new heart to be manufactured in him in the name of Jesus Christ. Horace, we command that heart to change now, become new now in the name of Jesus Christ and we command your that hypertension every every contraction of your, your, your veins, your muscles in your heart and all around we command it right now to expand and cause a free flow of your blood in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord Trevor and Everton we speak to them right now when we come we ask you Lord God Almighty visit them in their dreams visit them like you visited Abimelech talk to them oh God Almighty like you talk to Pharaoh visit them oh God and cause them to come to know you as Lord and Savior let them realize that the time is short we are in the end times and if they do not make the decision now they could face eternity in hell we thank you Lord God Almighty for sister Cecile Kelly this morning Lord God Almighty we ask you to have mercy have mercy on her oh God Almighty 
Lord, restore unto her the joy of your salvation. Father God, the enemy has, has, has drawn her away again and she is again in the hospital with stroke-like symptoms. But we declare that Cecile shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. We speak to her joints and marrow. We speak to her bloodstream. We speak to every element and aspect of her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Our God, we command natural healing to come to her now. But Lord, we also command spiritual healing to come to her now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For Lord God, our soul needs to be revived and renewed. And so we speak to Cecile's soul now and we command the mind of Christ, the recognition of Christ, the blessings of Christ, the oil of Christ, the presence of Christ, the spirit of Christ to be evident in her in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, we lift up Andre Nesbet before you this morning. Lord, whatever it is that the enemy is using to spike her blood pressure, whatever it whatever uh, 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 circumstances that is causing stress, that is causing fear, that is causing doubt, that is causing a spike in our blood pressure. We break that now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every spirit of anxiety, we break you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that wants to manifest as the spirit of stroke, we break that now in the name of Jesus and we declare that Andre Nesbeth is off limits. She is a part of our family and she is off limits to the devil you cannot take her we pursue in the realm of the spirit we overtake and we recover Andre Nesbeth this morning and we command you to let her go and we take her back to the place of wholeness to the place of peace to the place of celebration in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father we lift up Stacy and Thompson before you this morning hallelujah her family and especially her daughter we declare that this is the day when Stacy and's family is renewed and restored. This is the day when Stacy and family eh, experience you like never before. Lord, cause a divine visitation, a divine manifestation. Lord, may Stacy and her family recognize that you are God from beginning to the end, especially her daughter. Lord God Almighty, may her daughter encounter you and let everything that has caused her to be fearful or doubting of who you are be moved from her mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our sister Alicia this morning hallelujah we pray for speedy release of our of our documents oh god almighty you know in the system in the immigration system father you know where they are you know who is supposed to sign it and we thank you lord that it is not only signed but i thank you that her pre-covid job that she had where she was able to 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 constantly and consistently be in the fourth watch hour lord we thank you for restoration of her life pre-covid but lord that it will not just be restored to the way it was but will be elevated we thank you for promotion we thank you for oh god almighty increased salary and all these things to her blessings untold in the name of jesus christ father we lift up aisha knees mother before you beatrice richards oh father Beatrice, hallelujah, Beatrice Richards in New Jersey, Lord we send the word to New Jersey like you send the word to the centurion's house, like you send the word to the woman who came say her daughter was vexed with a devil, like you send the word to her house, we send the word to New Jersey right now for Beatrice Richards and we declare that every stomach issue, every demonic stomach issue, every food that Beatrice has eaten, come on Aishani stand in the gap, I want you to put your hand on, on your stomach Aishani Aishani put your hand on your stomach stomach right now right now right now that devil must come out of your mother's stomach right now it is something that she has eaten in her sleep but it shall not be so the devil is a liar father we command right now as Aishani stands in the gap for her mother right where her mother is now she will begin to vomit up that food that she ate in the name of Jesus Christ every demonic food that was not cancelled every demonic food over the years that has poisoned Aishani's mother ah Beatrice Richards every food in her stomach must come up now by fire by fire by fire by fire as pepto bismol goes down and soothes the stomach so we send down olive oil in the spirit fire in the spirit water in the spirit and we command every unholy unrighteous thing every infirmity and every spirit of the devil that is in Beatrice Richards's stomach to come up now 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 we command a cleansing she will release from the top and from the bottom every way and 
and her stomach shall be made whole now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a demon and it shall go now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Aisha, if you're hearing me, please tell your mother every morning she wakes up, if she dreamed that she was eating in her sleep, she needs to cancel it and command it to come out of her body now in the name of Jesus. The more you eat in your sleep and do not cancel it is the more your body become poisoned by the enemy because that's how you get all these sicknesses and disease that we have. It's either by natural food or spiritual poisonous food. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for Dwayne Thompson this morning. We thank you for speedy recovery from kidney cancer surgery. Lord, we speak to his kidneys right now. And even as what man has done, our God has cut off and cut and carved and, 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 and tried to stitch up and fix. But God, you give new kidneys. And so we thank you for a new kidney for Dwayne Thompson this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we cancel, cramp, and paralyze every assignment of the enemy against him. And we declare that no more cancer shall be in his body. Every cell every cancer cell we set fire to you now and we burn you out in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth father we lift up angela bradford before you this morning hallelujah she has not walked for over a year and has developed ulcers on her back angela bradford sylvan goal have we not to give you today but such as we have give us unto you in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ that Paul preached, that Peter preached, that was the God of, 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 of Daniel, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, of Elijah and Elisha, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That same God is our God today. Those people are dead and gone. And there are Jesus Christ. That is the God who performs. Forms. And so, Lord God Almighty, by the same anointing, by the same Holy Spirit that caused the mad gate of heaven beautiful to rise and begin to worship, we command Angela Bradford to arise and begin to worship, arise and be made whole, arise and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. We lay hands upon you in the realm of the Spirit and we declare every ulcer, every sore, miraculously healed that even those around you, your caregivers, will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord. And so Angela Bradford, we declare you healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And finally, Lord, we just lift up before you the storm conditions that are operating in the atmosphere right now. Lord, Jamaica cannot take a glass more of water, not even a glass. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command every storm system operating at the north, to the north, the south, the east, or the west of this country, of this, of the nations of the Caribbean that have been inundated it pummeled by the way by by the uh, amount of water and by the destruction that has taken place many have died oh god almighty in this season already just last week in honduras and nicaragua the death toll was way too high in jamaica two people a father and a daughter died and that was too many and so lord god almighty we come against every storm system that is planned and every storm system that is forming now and we say dissipate now in the name of jesus christ every serpent spirit operating like like storm uh, as you begin to wind up like a cobra ready to to, to to strike we cut off your head now we cut off your head now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we declare that you shall not build up any strength you shall not strike at Jamaica you shall not strike at the Caribbean you shall not strike at Louisiana or any other uh, southern coast country uh, as of now we declare the hurricane season over in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name hallelujah amen 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 hallelujah hallelujah ah uh, glory to God and father we just lift up Aretha Berger Hallelujah, hallelujah, as she's about to do a CT scan, hallelujah, her CT scan must be clean. We declare Aretha Berger healed, delivered, set free, and made whole. Any symptom that has caused them to, to ask for a CT scan, we cancel it now. All symptoms gone, all symptoms gone. All evidence of anything that would show up on the scan, we cancel it now. Every possibility of cancer cell, every possibility of any abnormality, we speak to you now and command you to receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. And we burn out everything out of Aretha 
Burger's body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. We have interceded already for so many and in so many situations because God is a good God. We must seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness and everything else that we need will be added unto us. And so if we take care of our natural business now, when I say to you, ah, good morning on behalf of Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, oh, I should say good morning, good day good afternoon good evening good night for wherever you are in the world it is a good day that god has made just for you this time that we are having now is called the fourth watch hour and no matter where you are if it is night where you are seven o'clock six o'clock five o'clock in the, in the evening or two, two o'clock in the afternoon it is still the fourth watch hour in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we bless you and we welcome you and you are family and we love the whole I want to. Remember me told you, you got to learn some patwa. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We have a birthday celebration this morning. Donna Hewitt. Donna Hewitt. Donna Donna, Donna, happy birthday. Come on, people of God. Wish Donna a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, dear Donna. Happy birthday. I make we sing now. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, dear Donna. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Donna, we just pray God's blessings and favor upon you. We pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. We pray that the Lord will give you many more years of health and strength, prosperity and good success. May as he was with Moses and with Joshua, may he also be with you and may he do everything that he desires to do for you, in you and through you. In Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, so guys, as we have been, you know, yesterday, uh, as the Lord led, we, were, we, we, we started out doing this topic, will you still believe? God has made a covenant with us and we have made a covenant. Will you still believe slash trust in God when things are not going your way? When I did some research, I looked at some stuff, I saw where even pastors were leaving the faith because what they thought they were coming into and how they thought God would work for them, he was not working for them in that same way. They misunderstood when they were brought into the kingdom that it is us who need God. Come on. And not God who need us. God has, it's like, why do you think people change their cars sometimes every year if they can afford to? Because it's not the car that need them, is them that need the car. And so in the, in the case of God, we are just the vehicles that do stuff for God in the earth. He is the manufacturer. He can make more cars. Mm -hmm. Come on. Please. He can replace every year, every five years, the car manufacturers make a new design and a new model. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, sometimes I see some cars come out five years ago. The, 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 um, the Honda CRV was looking so good. I was like, wow, what a nice car. And then five years later, I see the new version of the Honda CRV. And I'm like, wow, them wicked. Eh? How could they do this to the one that looked so good five years ago? That's how it is. You just keep remodeling and repositioning and re-engineering and, re and, 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 and restoring and renewing uh, so that you can be better every time in God. You cannot be better outside of God. Hear me, people. And so we're having this discussion because it's a really serious issue that is under the mainstream. People are turning away from the faith. A lot of people are not coming to the faith and people are leaving the faith for reasons that they don't even understand. This morning again as I was getting ready, the Lord said something to me that was so profound. I hope I remember it in the way that it can be written down. Listen, because sometimes when I say these things, I don't remember them. The Lord said to me, how can you with a finite mind understand an infinite God? How can you with a finite mind come on, truly understand and come to the fullness of the revelation of the infinite God. Your little brain, no matter how brilliant you are, cannot under any circumstance 
fully understand or take in the magnitude of God. That's what it means. Our minds are, are finite and God is infinite. Amen? Hallelujah. Someone who has been trained as a mechanic to fix um, uh, 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 the, the old time cars, the cars with carburetors, the cars that didn't have as many computers. If you put them in the engine of a 2020 Mercedes Benz 450 ML, they will be lost. They will feel like they have no clue what's going on. Because to them, that engine is infinite and their knowledge, their understanding is finite. And so they're confused. They will even say, Cho, that's, a fool. that's foolishness because they're trying to defend. That's what we do with God. And so we leave the mechanic trade. We say we no longer wants to be, want to be a mechanic. You know why? Because we come upon an engine that we don't understand. God expects us when we come upon an engine, when we come upon him, when we come into something, some situation, some circumstance like the universe, like science, like, 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 like creation, like all these things that, 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 that we can't explain because we came and saw it. Come on. Hallelujah. Because we came and saw it, we're not supposed to be discouraged by it. We're not supposed to be, uh, you know. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be, 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 be going to him and say, you who are infinite, you who are the Alpha and the Omega, you who are the first and the last, you who are, are sovereign, you who are the, 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 the beginning and the end of everything, direct us in this area. Give us your wisdom as much as you can because we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And so when persons are going to try to intellectualize God, when they're going to try and reason out God, one person says, what is the relationship between religion and science? And is there one? There is a relationship between everything that God has created. Man has created nothing. Man has invented some stuff from the materials that God has created. Come on. There is nothing that man has now. What was the microwave made from? What was cars made from? Everything. Paper. See? Paper. You saw like this is and easy to tear and you can write on it and all of this. It was made from something that God created. Wood. Everything. Every single thing was made from something or has a connection to something that God has created. How do you explain that when you are, are, are the beneficiary down the line of something that you didn't know? You came and saw. And so because you can't explain what you came and saw, you try to rubbish it. That makes no sense to me. Let me just say something to you. Regardless, you notice, people of God, as we talk through this topic, you notice that the more brilliant a person is, is the less likely they are to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord. The less likely they are to accept that God Almighty exists, the more brilliant they are. You know the one thing that they don't recognize? That they were born with that brilliance. They were born with that ability. What was missing when they were born was knowledge, information. But they had the ability, their brain was born wired to be like a computer, wired to be the best. And they cannot explain or understand that. Do they take their brain out of their head and take it back to the sea or to the earth and bury it or, to, or throw it up in the heaven and say, God, I don't want this, take it back? They cannot explain why their brain is so, is so different, is so unusual, is so wonderful, is so amazing. They cannot explain it, but they don't give that back. But when they give their lives to the Lord and they begin to use the same brain that God has given them, but with misguided information that man has sown into them, they then turn around and say, I am taking myself away from God. Give back God your brain. <laughs> give back God your brain, your bad mind somebody. I'm not talking to you guys. <laughs> Come on, we're just having fun, guys. Yeah? Don't take it serious. Don't, I'm... I'm, I'm Please, you must know me by now. We're just having fun. But I'm saying to you, seriously, think about it though. Here it is that we have not seen our brain. We go to school, look, 
in a class of 30 students, whether at university or, um, or high school or primary school or basic school, in a class of 30 students, there are going to be some that no matter how they try will not be A students. Some will come through as C students, some will come through as D, some will come through F, some will come through B, and some will come through A. Some will just naturally be able to listen to what the teacher is saying in the class and they'll be able to remember it and just be brilliant. Let me tell you, I can tell you this man, if, when I listen to my nine-year-old son, I'm saying to myself, if at nine years old, hallelujah, glory to God, if at nine years old I was so witty, I was so sharp, I had so much command of the English language and words and these kinds of things that I hear, not just him, it's not just my son, I'm just using him as an example because he, he, I, I have him to use. Come on, but you are children too. In this dispensation, when we hear, I see what they're studying called pep and these things. I said to myself, I am glad I don't have to deal with these things because pep now, beginner's education is more advanced than what we used to do in university 25 years ago. Let's be real. And so I'm saying to you guys, when we are trying to intellectualize God, when God does not line up with our finite knowledge, that little did we know that what God's input into our lives, we take what man has inputted and what the devil has inputted in the basis, in the house. It's like God give you a mansion and you take, you go out and somebody tells you that these uh, furnitures are antique. They rinky dink and old and battered and tired, but because you 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 are influenced by this person, you say, okay, these are antique, unusual furniture. And you put these furnitures in all the room of your house. You pay good money for them too, expensive. And every time someone comes to your house, they're like, whoa, oh my goodness. These furniture, they, they just tear down, they make the house look bad. It's like ugly clothes and a good-looking woman or a good-looking man. A man who is, you know, him thing, buff and thing. There are some clothes that I put on. Sometimes I'm going out and my wife is like, how are you going at that? You know, she speaks Pata very good, right? <laughs> I hope you can understand. Where are you going in that? That don't look good on your tall. That doesn't make your body look good. And I have to take them off like a puppy. <laughs> I have to take them off. I'm saying to you, God has given us the body and the system, the nature, the, 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 the natural elements of us uh, put stuff on it to dress it up. Just like God has given us the brain and we go to university, to school and all these people who have gone before us and who think they know everything, they are the ones that put information in that brain. And when that information begins to, to, to denigrate or to disrespect the brain, that's a foolish, foolish position. I hope you're getting me. When the clothes become more important than the body, that's a foolish position. Come on, people of God. And I'm saying to you, Paul, the Apostle Paul, let's go into word. The Apostle Paul thought that he's studying under Gamaliel. You notice how Gamaliel is mentioned in the scripture. Because Gamaliel studied under somebody. And the brain that God gave to Gamaliel made him famous by the information that he was able to contain. And the brain made him more brilliant than others. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so Paul, who also got a brilliant brain, one of those legal minds that the ability to, to, to remember an entire book. Some of you are like that. You remember um, textbook after textbook after textbook, just the entire book from first page to last page. You can remember all of that. But the problem is not with the ability of your brain. The problem is what you stuff into it. So when you stuff so much information into that, that, that awesome, finite brain that God has given you, that information begins to push out God. Oh, come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Let's talk about it. Let's go there. People are running away from Christ because they cannot get Christ to fit into their finite mind. They cannot contain him they cannot explain him they cannot no you cannot explain god you have to have a relationship with god you have to encounter god and some of these people that are leaving the faith they really what they should leave is their church uh oh 
Did I just say that? Did I just say that? Hear me. Family. If you are going to a church, and I, I mean no disrespect. Come on, we got to be real because we're in the end times. We're in the end times. If you're going to a church and every single time you go to church, whether Saturday or Sunday, all you hear is the word, but you never see the manifestation of God. Through that word, you might as well be at the University of the West Indies in a law class. It just sounds different. And even a law class at the university, even a class of medicine at the university is going to produce uh, 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 the ability to get people either locked up or freed. It's going to produce the ability to get people either sicker or, or healthy. Come on, it's going to produce something. What is your word producing? What is your time in the Bible producing? Because if it's not producing anything, then hey, hello. Let's be real. If we can't be real as a family, we can't talk this thing through because people are falling away from the faith. People are saying God not real. People are saying how could God be so wicked to, to, to let all of these things happen to people? How could science disprove the Old Testament and the New Testament? Really? Really? Science can't disprove anything. You know why? Because science is a study of what God has already made. Science is a study of what God has put in place. Man came and saw the universe. Before man knew the word science, God existed and the world existed long before. How are you now going to create a, a, a jargon, a study? Uh, you're going to, 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 to check gravity that was about before you were born and then try to use that information that you have gained in your finite mind to try and justify that the infinite one who created all of what you came and saw does not exist. Does that make sense to you? It can't. What is happening is because what we have learned has made us so famous, we want nothing to be above us. We want no limitations to us. And so we begin to say anything that anyone purports to be above us or to be uh, the, 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 the source from which we gain what we gain, we rubbish it. We rubbish it. And that is what is happening. People want to be God, so they have to replace God in order to be God. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. These people want to be God, so they have to replace God in order to be God. Because if God is on the throne, there's only one seat, one <clears throat> posterior that can hold on the throne. And so just like in the communities, if a man wants to be the don for a community, he has to unseat the existing don. The commission of police, if there is to be another commissioner coming up the ranks in the JCF, he, they have to unseat the one that is there. In election time, if the prime minister is going to sit in the chair, in the chair he has to unseat the one that is there or hold on to his seat. It's the same thing. They are trying to unseat God so that they can be God. If they have no one to report to, then they are the one that gets reported to. And that's what they want to do. So the intellectualism that is forging a, 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 a mission, Paul was an intellect, as I was saying before. He studied under Gamaliel. He boasts about it. But there's something that most persons miss in the scripture. It, there's something in, in Acts. There's something that they, that they miss in scripture. When Paul was converted, the Bible says he had to go back. He had to go into the wilderness for three and a half years to be retrained. All of that brilliance, all of that information that Gamaliel poured into him was contrary to God. All he did was fought and beat up and killed Christians and he said he was doing all of that in the name of the Lord but he was just being a God by himself and so when God met him Jesus met him on Damascus road and says why are you kicking against the prick why are you trying to fight something that is only hurting you 
he was completely befuddled and couldn't understand it. And God restored him and gave him his wisdom. And look what Paul became. Look what he became. People of God, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot intellectualize God. The moment we try to use what man has placed in us, and the devil for the most part, has placed in us. Because when God has placed himself in you, you only give thanks and praise and honor and glory. You don't try to usurp him. You don't try to, 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 to make him look bad or try to make it look like you are the one who is doing it. Sometimes you hear some of these pastors and preachers and, and apostles and prophets and when they beat their chest and tell you it's hard for you to distinguish between them and God. Please don't become like that. I beg of you and please pray for them. When you, if you're, if you're pastor, if you're prophet, if you're apostle, if you're evangelist, if you're, if you're teacher or preacher, come on. If you go to a church and you, you recognize this pomper, this, this, this Saul, because when he became Paul, he, he shifted. If, if you're seeing a Saul on your pulpit, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them, because God keeps the proud afar off. So he might still be using him, but unless he repent and change, he will not, not get there. The lower you are, Jesus himself lowered himself, made himself of no reputation. He said, I came not to be served, but to serve. Most of us these days, you see it, and I'm not knocking the church or the people of God. I love them. But I'm saying to you, you got to follow the scriptures. When, you're, when, you have, when you begin to intellectualize God, the intellectual position says government ministers are not supposed to work for us. We work for them. That's not what the principle of the process is. They work for us. They're supposed to be under the bottom. It's a kingdom principle. Jesus called 12 disciples and it's a government that he set up. And that government worked for the people. The people were always on top of the government and the government trying to push them up. That's what I'm trying to do now. I'm called to be a lowly servant that have to spend time hearing from the president and CEO so that I can know what to execute as a manager in the earth. So that God's people can become better. Every single Christian is supposed to be like a university teacher. Your job is not to try and fail students. Your job is trying to produce the best students that these students can go into industries, can form companies, can create and invent things, can, can, can move the nation to a great level. And that nation that is produced by those children will be standing on your shoulder and on your head. That's the model that Jesus Christ set. And that's the model that's supposed to be. Everyone in leadership is supposed to have strong backbones, strong shoulders, and strong head. So that you can carry any load that God has given you to carry. Are you hearing me? So if you want to get married, husbands, men out there, if you want to get married, know that you are the one that is going to have to bear the load of the family on your back. If you have not been going to spiritual gym, if you have not been feasting and exercising and curling and bench pressing and squatting the word and getting strong, you will not be able to carry a family. Oh, come on, somebody. That's a new one. That's a new one. If you have not been squatting and bench pressing the word, you will not be able to carry your community or your nation. And that's what we are seeing today. We have not been pulled aside and retrained. We're still inter trying to intellectualize God. That's why we become upset with God. Because when you have studied and you know your work, come on, some of you who have been to school, you, you, you're, you're brilliant, but you've gone into the exam and you fail. And you're upset either with yourself or with the teacher. There's no way I could have failed. No way. I know too much. I know the work. I am good at what I do. But you failed. And that's what we see God. When we, have no, when we feel that confident that we know so much. 
that we know so much word. We know how to pray. We know how to say, God, your word says that you will grant us, uh, you will give us houses we never built and vineyards we never plant. Even when you're misquoting or misdiagnosing or misappropriating the word, you still call it out and when you don't see God react to it, God, you are not God's boss, people. And remember, I don't want to go over yesterday. Remember I said that uh, uh, being angry with God, though it is not okay, it is natural. In the naturalness of ourself, in our fleshly self, we expect God to do for us whatever we ask him, whenever we ask him, as if he's a puppy. Come puppy, come puppy, come puppy, come puppy. Come kitty, here, yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. And if the kitty don't come same time, we think something is wrong. We think he's either not in the house or, or, or he's sick. Something must be wrong why kitty don't come. God is not your kitten. God is not your puppy. Come on, people. And I'm not upset. I'm just saying we have to understand in order to tr truly begin change. Will change come overnight? No, and I don't expect it either. I don't expect it, honestly. So I'm saying this in love because we first have to recognize that God is not our kitten or our puppy. God is not our pet. And as we recognize this and we begin to change from this, it's going to take a little while because sometimes because of habit, because of how we've been trained up, come on, we're going to go back to a situation maybe two months down the line and we're going to say, God, I need my light bill. God, don't let them cut off my light. God, you said in your word that you will provide for me according to your riches in glory. Hallelujah. Even though I didn't pay no tithes and offering. Mm -hmm. The Philippians gave to Paul and sometimes there are some things that cause God not to be able to move because you know the part that he's supposed to do, but you don't know the part you're supposed to do. Or did I just make some people mad? I hope not. Jesus said to the, the disciples at the, at, the, at the foot of the Mount of Transfiguration, Woe ye of little faith. Firstly, woe ye of little faith. Then when they asked him, How come we couldn't cast out this demon out of this boy? And some versions say, This kind Go it not out but through fasting and prayer. Some people have completely misunderstood it. So when they, when, when, when they need their child to get through university, they begin to fast and pray for the, the school fee, for the academic excellence of the child, for the child to get through the four years or five years or seven years without any hitches. They fast and pray until they mug down. Hear me carefully. Hear me carefully. My perspective, there might be many others with other perspective. My perspective is that like Jesus, we're supposed to be in the secret place, fasting and praying that the fullness of God becomes in us. That when we step out, whether we are facing university fees, whether we are facing job loss, whether we are facing business slowdown, whether we are facing sickness or disease, Jesus never had to go fast and pray for anything specific. When he came upon it, because he was already fasted and prayed up, he just spoke to it. If you wait until the situation confront you to fast and pray, you might be a little late. If it's when a storm coming and I don't, I'm not taking a job at my wife, I love my wife. If it is when a storm is forming in the sea that you are fasting and praying for that storm, you're late. By the time the storm form, you're supposed to be so powerful and, and, and power pack that you just say, storm, where you going? In the name of Jesus Christ, go. And that's where we want to get to. That's what we are trying to do. So don't try and intellectualize God. Just spend time in God. Spend time in God. Because where you are intellectualizing God from, people of God, God is who gave you that ability to even start that process. And until you can get past yourself into how did I get this brain? How did this brain become like a sponge for everything around me? How did I get a photographic memory? Did my mother give it to me? Is it a generational blessing? Did it just appear in my head? Am I more brilliant than anyone else 
in terms of ability just because of my looks or because of where I was born, my street address or my family last name. No, it's because God Almighty gave you that ability. So don't use that against him. Do not use it against him. He would not have given you all of that magnificence and then turn around and not facilitate the fullness of what is supposed to come to pass. He was begun a good work, a great work, in you is faithful to see it through to completion even to his return even to his return and so guys you know there are some questions on the intellectualizing side the first one was what is the relationship between religion and science hallelujah they, 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 they they're symbiotic in a lot of ways they're connected in a lot of ways um, but when science wants to be the dominant force as opposed to God, then they have no relationship because God is science and science is God. There are elements of God that you can explain and elements that you cannot explain. Science needs to stop where science needs to stop and allow God to be God because if you could explain everything, then you would be God. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Does believing in one negate the other? No. Because gravity was created by God. Science is what detected and even calculated the speed of gravity. So science is important in order to recognize the goodness of God. Oh, come on somebody. Science is important to recognize the goodness of God. Everything that science has been able to identify has only further strengthened the reality that God exists. Amen? Hallelujah. Because science only discovers or proves what already exists. Mm, I sound like an apologist, not you. Straight from the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. The number three question, what is the role of logic versus faith or reason versus faith? What is the role of logic Versus faith. Let me tell you. It goes back to the whole thing of. Where does logic come from? Where does reason come from? Bless God. Reason comes from the mind that God gave you. If you are trying to reason out. Why your brain is able to perform the way that it did. Go ahead and spend time doing that. Go ahead and spend time doing that. Because if you can figure that out. Then. You can begin to ask a question up from that. You can begin to reason out God if you can reason out your brain. Why did I get this brain? How is this brain wired? Why does this brain work the way that it works? Because your brain is where your reasoning comes from. But your reasoning, what most persons do not realize, is that your reasoning does not have its origin in your brain. It has its origin in someone else's brain. If you were born, and I, I say this to you so that you can get an understanding. If you, any one of you, if all of us as a Fort Watch family were born on a little island just off the coast of Jamaica, sunshine 24-7, no hurricane, no, no, no excessive rain, nothing at all, everything perfect, all right, let me move that then. Because I'm, I, I, I would, I'm presupposing that the Garden of Eden is just off the coast of Jamaica. <laughs> if we were in the Garden of Eden, all, there's 122 people on right now. If all 122 of us were born and raised in the Garden of Eden, tell me which one of you, in your brilliantness, would be thinking the way you're thinking now, would be speaking as you're speaking now, would be doing as you're doing now. We would not. We wouldn't be afraid of lions and cockroaches and lizards and, and, and cockroaches, Lord, that's a Jamaican term, roaches. We wouldn't be afraid of any of those things. You know why? Because we would have dominion over them. All we would know is dominance. And the only one and only thing that would be dominant over us 
is the Almighty God that would come down in the cool of the afternoon and minister to us like we're ministering now in the fourth watch. And so if we are not exposed to another God who creates an army or a government of people in universities, in, 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 in prep schools and primary schools and high schools, they have infiltrated with the sole intent to inject information in us like the serpent devil did to Eve and caused us to fail then we would not be thinking or acting the way that we are and so hear me carefully as we close this morning from the intellectual side you are only as intellectual as someone else has fed into you how do you know that that person wasn't a witch or a warlock how do you know that that person wasn't Satan himself disguised with a specific intent to let you feel that what he has given you will make you better than God? Will make you so powerful that you discriminate against other people? Will make you so rich that you begin to do evil things to other people? Meditate on that for a second. Everything that you now know was taught to you by someone else was that information originally from god or was it from the devil good or bad we say academic studies and these things are good are they was paul academically trained muse on that muse on that so we have to begin to think differently I'm not saying education is not good. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying all of the, those things are good. But if they go against God, then that's unacceptable. Amen? Because God is who has prepared us in the first place to receive and to regurgitate for his glory all, all, all that we can take in. And so everything that we do we live and move and have our being in him by the situations and circumstances that are around us. And all of it, all of it must bring glory to God. Satan will have to back up when even what he inputs brings glory to God. If the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified Christ. If Satan had known that all this setup, this elaborate thing that he was creating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, if he had known that all of this that he did with Judas was going to lead to his downfall, he would not have done it. Come on, make him regret. Make him regret telling you that as a lawyer, as an accomplished lawyer, you're better than other people. Make him regret telling you that you must be proud because your child is a doctor or because you're a doctor. Make him regret that because you are a learned scholar and call reverend and doctor this and doctor that, that you are bigger than anybody else and if they don't call you doctor, you will not answer. Make him regret it. Make him regret it. Become lowly even in your intellectual prowess because God has given you a finite mind but he is infinite. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, Vex. <laughs> God is good. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the theological issues that causes some people to, to, to not believe in the promise of God, in the covenant that God has made with us. We talked exhaustively, uh, um, I would think, within the context of what we have chosen um, on the intellectual side. I hope it helps some persons. Please don't become over... Yeah, the scriptures are in the, on the page in oh, the meditation yes. um, section. The scriptures are on the page in the meditation section, yes, right? put it on the meditation section. Yep. All the scriptures that, that, that um, were referenced for, us, that, for you this morning, for us this morning, um, they're on the, in the meditation page. So you can just go and just connect the scriptures with um, what was discussed and make sure because even with me people of God hear me I am not offended even with me you gotta check what I am sowing into you it must connect to your spirit not your soul if you get excited and say oh that sounds so nice devotion was so good and it's all emotion I'm not happy I'm not excited I want to see you on TV. I want to hear you on radio. I want to, 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 to go to a church and hear or, or, or hear that you are at a church just ripping up the place from the, the 
power and the anointing that God has given you. Amen? That's what would make me feel good. Not how intellectual you are. Intellectual is good, important. But you must be intellectually deep, deep in him who has given you the ability to be intellectual by the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Love you guys. Hope you still love me after this morning. <laughs> Jesus, communion time. We're out of time. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, we bless you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for our Fort Watch family. We thank you for those in the watch parties and for those who have shared and those who will continue to just watch again, oh God Almighty, to gain what you have more deep insights into what you have said this morning. Hallelujah. May your blessings and favor be upon every member of this family and upon their family and upon their children and children's children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you cover us, O God Almighty, and take everything that is evil out of our day your way. Bless, cover, guard, and keep in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let every word find fertile soil and come forth and produce great fruit that our generation and the generations to come will eat from and be blessed in Jesus' name. Lord, as we are about to eat of your body and drink of your blood, we ask that you will examine our thoughts, our words, and our actions. If there be any from us, O God, that has contravened your law, your rules, your regulations, or your precepts, we repent now and ask your forgiveness, for it was not intentional. Let it be so according to your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we ask that you will bless, sanctify, and consecrate these emblems even now. We eat of them eat of the body and drink of your blood in remembrance of your death, burial and resurrection until you come. Bless them, sanctify them, consecrate them even now like you did for the disciples. So do for us now that we too might be like them in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he gave it to the disciples and he said, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says, likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it, he took a sup, and he gave to them, and he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, the new testament. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me, my death, burial, and resurrection, until I come. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I hope that you were blessed this morning. Have an amazing day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. That you might wear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you and glow like Moses glowed when he came down from the mountain in the cleft of the rock. May all the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the Lord be evident in you and through you that God might be glorified and those around you will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go forth, my family. Have an amazing Tuesday. Hallelujah. You are blessed and highly favored, man. Go and have a great day. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day, his way. In Jesus' name. You are powerful, more than a conqueror. So go conquer. Hallelujah. And remember, Jesus love you. And we love the whole of you too. Mwah. Hey, hey. Glory to God. It is well. Go conquer. Go conquer. Go conquer. Remember, pray for somebody. Bless somebody. Encourage somebody. Do something to show that you are truly interested in demonstrating Jesus by the Holy Ghost to your fellow man. Amen. All right. Be blessed. Tomorrow is Prophetic Wednesday. God willing, we shall be here again to prophesy, thus saith the Lord, to encourage, to edify, and to comfort God's people. Bless you.